We are live. Welcome to Jessica Jones Season 3 Thoughts. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this season. And please note, I might spoil the finale while talking about the first episode. So do not watch any of this video until you've watched all of Season 3. So, I am going to dive right into the first episode, a.k.a. The Perfect Burger. And, let's see. Yeah, so we open on Jessica finding a kid who was kidnapped by the ex-husband. I really appreciate this acknowledgement, you know, for a while... The, the There was this misconception that kidnapping, that's something that strangers do. In reality, I, f I forget the exact numbers, but it is more likely to be one of the parents, especially if there's like a divorce or so, that kind of thing. You know, so yeah, I really appreciate it. And, you know, the kid doesn't want to go home because she likes the dad better than the mom. But he broke the law, so it is this, you know, I really love how Jessica Jones, th this show is always, like, just on the edge of, like, I mean, yeah, I kind of understand why, but that's not really a good thing, just, yeah, absolutely love that. And he keeps provoking her, and eventually she throws him, and of course it's off camera, you know, we see him... I forget if we see him land, but we see him fly through the air. We do not see her pick up and throw him because Marvel Netflix cost cutting. And once again, Jessica is compared to Joan Jett. I gotta admit, when I first... I, I know very little about Joan Jett, just the, the look. And I want to say Kristen Stewart played her in a movie. Other than that, you know... Yeah, obviously... I am aware that she's the one with the, the, um, I don't give a damn about, uh, I don't give a damn about my bad reputation, you're living in the past, it's a new generation, you know, that's really, really catchy, and, yeah, uh, I was a young rebel too. Okay, I'm still a rebel, but I'm not, I'm too young to say that I'm not young. Anyway, um, yeah. I am aware that Jessica Jones looks a lot like Joan Jett, and I I want to say I think it's the 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 mother, you know, and she's like, oh wow, the kid is really not happy to be home, and she, you know, okay, your sliding scale just went to zero, you third rate Joan Jett wannabe, and Jess just turns, and then the mother like ducks into the you know. Which is also funny, because in, in this dark comedy kind of way, because that's not gonna, that's not even gonna slow Jessica down, like, if, you know, yeah, yeah, sure, lock the door, you know, like, I mean, unless she has some weapon in there or something, that's not, you know, Jess opens locked doors like it's nothing. And we see that Jessica has a new assistant, Jillian, who pushes back on her much more than Malcolm. And, you know, I love that that's apparently because, you know, Jessica doesn't want to befriend her. So she made sure to hire someone who pushes back a lot so that they won't become friends. And, yeah. And she's apparently trans, which is awesome. And she's apparently the first in the MCU, which is really about time. Honestly, I think she might be my fav favorite new character of this season. And, yeah, they don't really say that she's trans. Like, I don't think I would have realized, if not because of Google, like, I wouldn't have been able to clock her. But, you know, a while back, a couple of months ago, I was like, okay, trans is basically the only thing, like... I, I wish there was more screen time for the gay characters, but there are now a handful of gay characters in the MCU, you know. Trans, still not. So, you know, I went ahead and Googled in case I missed one, in case I just wasn't able to clock them. And, yeah, she's she's the first, and as far as I can tell, still only MCU. There are a couple of others in Marvel, I think. I believe there is. I could be wrong about that. I, I didn't... F feel like it was the easiest piece of information to find out but yeah absolutely loved that yeah let's see 
and yeah, you know, the season's gonna explore if Jessica is a hero. Her mom thought so. The first season she was scared of being a hero because she connected to meeting Kilgrave and was part of the, the trauma. And yeah, Malcolm is in a long-term relationship now, moved into a better place in the apartment. His life is much more under his control than season one, and he's no longer expecting things to work out well job-wise with Jessica, like, at, you know, early in season two. I really like how they keep bringing up the sliding scale. They do some fun riffs on it. And Jessica shuts the door on Dorothy twice, but does eventually agree to look for Trish. And Jerry is intending suicide once the ALS really hits, and she asks Jess to give her the pills. And Jess, in her very Jess way, points out how messed up a request that is to make. I... Uh, I guess, really, um, Jerry's life has been um, gradually getting out of her control in all three seasons. You know, season one with Wendy and then Kilgrave, season two with the ALS and her partners getting her out of the company, and then this season, the... the um, yeah, you know, the the decision to, to represent people as awful as Salinger. I really appreciate that, like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like the show is talking down to us and saying, oh, look what happens. But at the end of the day, like, most of the bad things, a, a lot of the bad things, certainly, that happened to Jerry, Jaren, over the course of these three seasons are the results of her own actions, you know? She cheated on Wendy, so Wendy gets vindictive when the divorce is going on. You know, the... the uh, let's see... Yeah, she certainly got... More, yeah, yeah, she was the one who freed Kilgrave. She, she uh, got rid of the... Um, ah, what's it called? She, she sabotaged the, the torture device for him. And, yeah... You know, suddenly Wendy is trying to kill her with a knife. A thousand cuts. Season two. Like, obviously, the ALS was not her, you know, but she's... the the Her partners are cutthroat like she is. You know, if she was working with people who had empathy, but she chose to surround herself with people who are just as ruthless... And not really give them much, you know, they're not, they're not friends. They really aren't. And that was, for a long time, that was what she wanted. She wanted a more controlled sort of, um, yeah. And then in this season, you know, yeah, she loses Kith. She has a chance to get back with her. At first, Kith is clearly interested, but by the end of the finale, Kith leaves and... Yeah, you know, it's this, you know, J Jaren is like, well, I mean, it wasn't my fault that you were in danger because you showed up unannounced. And it's like, you know, uh, Kith doesn't say it. You know, she, she points out, well, there were other things, you know, it wasn't only that. There was just, that was the climax, as it were. And, yeah, the, like, think about how, imagine, like, being in danger because you showed up unannounced to someone you thought you could trust. You know, that's not supposed to happen. That's a crimson red flag right there. And, yeah, the, the, yeah, I, I really, it is the, the, and, and it's not that the, the show and we don't have empathy for Jaren. You know, we're told, I forget which of the, it was either season one or two. I think it was season two, where she points, you know, she, like, she grew up poor, and then she said, you know, the home life was pretty miserable, and then she went to school, and everyone bullied her, made her even more miserable, and so now she wants complete control of her life, and in that drive to get complete control of her life, to never be a victim again, you know, she's 
basically pushed everyone away. It's impossible to get close. You know, Pam turned her turned on her. You know, she went from turning her on to turning on her as well. You know, basic. I, yeah, by the end of season three, every single person that we know of that she's been intimate with. You know, I I wouldn't really say with Kith it's not really a betrayal, but the and and I think an argument could be made that she didn't really betray Kith this time, but she did before, which is also again you know don't do not go back to someone who has betrayed you like that. You know she cheated on her, and it, but but yeah you know um, she betrayed Wendy, she betrayed. Pam, and they both ended up betraying her as well, and yeah, you know, the best you could say about the thing with Kith is, Kith didn't really betray her, Kith never actually betrayed her, but early on she doesn't want a long-term, she doesn't expect a long-term relationship from Jaren, and later on she's like, you know, I know you don't want to die alone, but you will. Now, let's see. So, yeah, back to episode one. So, yeah, Malcolm is fed up with the baseball player driving drunk. So he rams his car into the players. And we hear that it's a career-ending injury. And let's see. Yeah, Trish is doing her own vigilante thing, attacks the guy with the gun, is frustrated with Jessica for getting involved. And at first, Jessica is not buying what Eric is selling, but he does end up making an impression. And she's stabbed, and the episode ends. And yeah, in this episode, we learn that Trish does not have a lock on her new door, even though she used to have a really powerful, you know, if you'll recall, like, uh, season one, I guess also season, yeah, yeah, before this season, she lived in, like, this Fort Noxian, like, there's, there's, uh, yeah, you know, huge, very powerful locks, uh, camera to make sure that she could, see, you know, and then she also have a, pa I think she had a panic room as well, so, yeah. She, you know, at this point, she does not worry about someone getting in a fight. You know, she knows she can fight them off. So, yeah, we're seeing character change. And I hesitate to call it character growth because this is very unhealthy. Like, you should not be, you know, it makes sense for her to have this lock. Like, she should not, yeah, you know, I mean, it's the, the, um... You know, what if someone came with a gun or something? You know, she does occasionally run into really messed up, you know, yeah, into stands rather than just fans. And that brings us to episode two, a.k.a. You're Welcome. And this episode is directed by Kristen Ritter, who also plays Jessica Jones. She does really well. And so this episode tells us what Trish has been doing until the end of episode one. And she narrates the episode, it turns out to be several drafts of an email to Jessica that I don't think... Yeah, she ends up not sending any of the, the drafts. And at first she struggles through the training, but she ends up getting really good. I love that it's filmed so that you can easily make it out and tell that a lot of it is real. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I figure the actress probably couldn't do very much of this without any resting or recuperation in between some of it might have been a double but some of the time you can see her face and this is marvel netflix very little cgi so yeah that appears to be and and yeah i really appreciate this thing of she's not just amazing at it right away you know at the end of season two we saw that her reflexes were now so fast that when she accidentally dropped her phone she could catch it and balance it perfectly on one of her feet and then she tries to do that again and loses the phone, pretty, pretty sure, yeah, because, you know, it lands hard, and that's, yeah. Let's 
see, and Dorothy suggests Trish should run for president, points out there's a petition circulating. I mean, honestly, she would probably be a lot better. She would definitely be better than Trump. Pums, pond scum would be better than Trump. And the, let, let's see, yeah, I think this, yeah, th this was back when it was still, tr I, ah, I'm just going to double check to make absolutely certain, there we go. Okay, so, Jessica Jones season three, yeah, yeah, um, this was when Trump was still president, and honestly, she'd be, in a lot of ways, she'd be better than, than Biden, like, I am left as they come, but wow, Biden is not... He's a lot, he's still a lot better than Trump. And I like, you know, at first Trish is getting nothing out of the police radio app, but she does end up stopping a cell phone rob thief robbery. It, it just, yeah, like at first it's these ridiculous, it's just, yeah, it's an old joke, but I like it still. And yeah, she stops the, the cell phone thief robbery and both thief, uh, yeah, both the, the, victim and the the robber recognize her calling her patsy so she realizes she has to cover her face i appreciate that this doesn't go quite batman begins with it like actually yeah yeah there was a while where every superhero you know amazing spider-man is spider-man begins the first iron man iron man begins but yeah this it's been a little while since we it's been a minute but yeah you know it's only the the we see her train a little bit and then she gets the the um, I forget what it is. Yeah, the, the thing to cover her, her face. And yeah, we get a montage of her trying on different suits. And I think the one she says hell no to is a very accurate comic costume, which, you know, yeah, the MCU does love poking fun at the comic book origins. And to be fair, like those colors, you know, if you toned it down a bit, you could, it, it could work, but yeah. Right, I, I didn't note it, but I, I did watch this brief video talking about, you know, the potential future that, you know, maybe Trish could be in, like, uh, the Thunderbolts or something, and that could be interesting, for sure. Um, yeah. And, I mean, she does have, you know, if, if I recall, one of the Thunderbolts is going to be Yelena Belova, so Trish does already have more superpowers than... You know, don't, don't get me wrong, Yelena Belova's a badass. I love that she seems to prefer leaving a room by t rappelling down the side of the building instead of taking stairs and such, but yeah, no superpowers, to be fair. Let's see, yeah, and, and Trish is really not used to getting in legal trouble. She doesn't realize that she's being served. Not that I'm going to pretend that I realized that that was what was happening until after the other person said that was what it was. And she told Jerry, oh, it wasn't self-defense. You know, I know Krav Maga. And Jaren is like, okay, you're, I know you're new to this. Please do not tell people that you have Krav Maga and it wasn't self-defense. Because that makes this so much more difficult for the, you know, to, to do a good... D defense but yeah it was it was really funny when she was in the in the you know she's out um exercising because you know she's 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 faster she can see in the dark and stuff but she still needs to exercise goes out you know she and and the other person walks up and the other person really does look like they're there to exercise you know trish walker not right now but you used to be yeah, and you're here exercising as Trish. Yes, God, I am here exercising as Trish Walker. Good, you've been served. <laughs> Let's see, and great scenes between Malcolm and Trish as well. And she told, tells him, it was her who shot Alyssa, and he points out she's still a vigilante. And let's see. Yeah, Trish tells Dorothy if she wants to help, she should help clean the apartment. And, if, you know, at first Dorothy says, you know, she must be mocking her. But then she does agree to do it to help her. She does want Trish to be okay. Let's see. And, yeah, and Trish stalks Andrew and stops the date rapist 
aids the would-be survivor understanding that she needs that. I really appreciate that. You know, it, it is clear that she does legitimately believe that she, you know, this is the right thing to do to, to go out and, you know, yeah, be a, be a vigilante. She do, It's not just the, the you know, um, Malcolm does say later, oh, it's, you know, it's an addiction. And if I recall, she does admit, yeah, there's a, there's that element to it, but it's not just, yeah, you know, she's not just going out and beating up people. She's also helping the people who, so, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and after the training, Trish has sex with Adrian, who's still there the next day, not, just, yeah. <laughs> that was a f fun little detail. And, you know, he does, you know, okay, sleep with a client, lose a client. And Malcolm explains why the number is not six figures, but only 50k. And tells Trish how bad this looks, so she takes the job. Dorothy told her about, and yeah, you know, by the end of the episode, we're completely caught up, and that brings us to episode three, aka I Have No Spleen, and... Yeah, um, the doctor who keeps making spleen puns, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a mark for puns, I, I do enjoy it, that's what I'm trying to explain to you, and over the course of this episode, Jessica keeps flashing back to the attack, and repeatedly insists that she is not a victim, it's a role she's not comfortable with. Yeah, I guess, yeah, because the last time she felt like she was a victim was before she managed to kill Kilgrave. So the idea that she could become a victim after that, you know, she still really, you know, it's, it, she's, um, she's still traumatized by having killed Kilgrave. The idea that it didn't, that, that the thing that, you know, I mean, obviously, it wasn't only that. It was also stopping him from victimizing anyone else. Let's see. And I appreciate that, you know, Malcolm and Zaya have a good relationship, sexual and loving. And, yeah, Jerry admits to Kith she cheated on Wendy, and their lunch does not last long. I quite like the intercutting of Jessica and Trish both looking for Brant, and throughout the entire episodes, the entire episode, they are both looking, and Malcolm brings the knife, but there are no leads. I, really good detail, because, yeah, you know, the, the he managed to get, or he managed to keep the knife because of this more, you know, he's he's used to now doing things that are not quite by the book. And the, the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, you know, he knew that Jessica would prefer they handle it in-house. Let's see. Malcolm hacks the professor's webcam, but does also get spotted, so he pretends to be a student. And, yeah, I thought that down the line they would meet in Jerry's office. As far as I recall, that didn't happen, but... It is maybe to, you know, yeah, the, what Malcolm is doing does risk, yeah. Let's see, and you can clearly see the disappointment on Trisha's face when her co-host co says, you were born for this about the shopping show. You know, to, to like, the co-host is trying to be supportive. She's like, no, you're really good at this. But what Trish hears is, you were not born for anything greater than this. 
I really appreciate that Jerry is still a sexual person. It's true that some people change that about themselves when they get a diagnosis like ALS, but some people don't. And it's something that a number of people find unappealing, don't want to think about, but it is true. Uh, you know, honestly, people with diagnoses can be just as unique as people without. I think episodes like this can help people realize that and treat people with diagnoses better in this regard. And... Yeah, we get the cello playing seduction scene. And Zaya almost catches Malcolm, but she thinks it's just porn. Clearly, she does not know what his job entails. And she's like, it's fine if you want to watch porn. I'm just saying, let's watch it together. It's surprising how many men don't realize that a lot of women feel that way about their partner. Your body has spleen better days. And Jerry finds out Kith is in an open marriage. She says she won't get attached, which clearly disappoints Jerry. You know, Jerry was hoping that she would be able to take Kith from Peter, and that's not, you know, Kith is not at all thinking that she would leave Peter. And... Um, that is something that can wait. Right, and let's see. Jessica realizes she had, you know, yeah, she had nothing to do with Mr. Knife Guy. And the knife was meant for Eric. I suppose I will just, there we go, and that brings us to episode four, customer service is standing by, <clears throat> and yeah, we learn Eric is in debt because he's a gambler, uses blackmail to make the money back. Chilling that not only is Sal's youngest playing at drowning people, but Sal is ecstatic that he is. And Eric says, you know, it's a non-stop migraine that can only be stopped by booze, gambling, and sex. And, you know, obviously in real life, nobody gets headaches because of someone, you know, being around someone who's bad just as like that but it is very true a lot of people who struggle with booze gambling and you know unhealthy sexual practices do it not because oh they think it's fun and then it got out of control but because they have emotional issues Let's see. and and you know i'm not saying you know sometimes it is that it got out of control and go find your own bad guy. I mean, that has to be a joke about sisters who can't share toys, right? And Jessica stops a pedophile. I really appreciate the details of this scene. While the, you know, she suspects pedophilia when she sees the room, she does check the camera just in case he's just weird. And while she sees the pictures, we don't because it's not necessary to show us. Everybody watching the episode understands that that's what's going on. There have been so many pieces of media that felt the need to make it visual when that just ends up exploitative. Now, that brings us to yeah uh jerry really struggles to accept the als aids added to the apartment you know especially the i, I want to say the lazy boy is when she really just no unacceptable and the other person you know understand no, no, no i i get it but if you'll look at you know yeah 
Zaya points out Malcolm tastes like Rockstar and sadness and doesn't want to keep kissing him until he takes care of that. And it's not made out to be a bad thing that she does because consent should be respected. I like how over the course of the confrontations that Eric and Jessica make together of people he blackmailed, we see that he is even more cynical than she is. He outright expresses the view that they could spend the rest of their lives stopping bad guys and not make a dent. And we do later understand why he's so cynical about it. And Malcolm manipulates Jerry into giving him a raise as he realizes she wants to destroy Peter's life so that she can have Kith. And Jerry helps Kith's career, but she knows with Jerry everything is transactional. I'm not talented enough for that, and I'm okay with that. Are you? So I guess that Kith is suggesting that the woman she's with is Jaren Foster Hogarth, wanting to disprove the newspaper saying the partner is not talented. And Trish thinks that she may have killed Sal. I really like that, you know, here early on... Yeah, so, so let's see, episode four, before the end of episode four... So that's less than a third of the way into the season is the first time that she seemingly, you know, at, at first it looks like Trish killed someone. It was by accident and she feels really bad. And then later, you know, yeah, she she killed Greg and she, you know, the attacks that she makes on Dimitri, like if the daughter hadn't shown up, he, yeah, she probably would have killed him. And Kith and Jerry getting erotic during the concert. I can't put into words how happy I am that their sex scenes are not shot in male gaze. They are clearly filmed and edited for, you know, lesbian and bisexual women, not straight men. Look at the focus on fingers. It even cuts to fingers on instruments since they can't on Netflix actually show fingers down there. Rather than curves and legs, which is what we straight men find visually sexually attractive. And, let's see. yeah, and Jessica meets Greg, and he is creepy from right away. And Jessica calls Trish on the show, asks for help. I really like, you know, and Trish is like, what sweater are you referring to? I, I'd like to help you, but I just, I need you to ask me for help, if you understand. You know, just... And, you know, Jess narrates, she doesn't want a partner, but a secret weapon. And Greg is eating an apple, and it's intensely creepy. It's just fruit. How is that creepy? And he leans back in frame slightly and gets photobombed by his recent victim. Photobombing a serial killer takes a lot of guts. The serial killer does, I mean. And that brings us to episode five. I wish. A.K.A. I wish. <clears throat> And, yeah, Jessica points out Greg holds every card. And Trish says, we have two superheroes, and Jessica can't help but smile a little. You know, Trish recently said Jessica wasn't a hero, just powered. Trish feels like Jessica doesn't have faith in her. People have been managing Trish since she was a child. She resents the suggestion that that's still necessary. And, let's see, yeah, Jerry comforts Kith, and Peter shows up at Jerry's apartment. What do you mean the power's out? There's no storm. And Trish realizes Greg took people's, you know, Greg, a photographer, took people's picture before and after he told them he'd kill them. And... Eric, Barry, and Jess try to work things out. I really love that Jillian and Trish get along, so much so that Jillian doesn't need to be paid to be around. You know, she's like, you know, the, at, by this point, I think we've seen two or three times that, that Jillian leaves when it's lunch break or when the, you know, 
yeah, when when the day is, you know, like, I, I want to say 5 p.m. or something, is when, you know. And then here, you know, Jess walks in and she's like, do you know what time it is? You know, and Jillian's like, yes, I like being around Trish. I, you know, I don't have to be paid for, yeah. And Jessica takes Barry and Eric to Malcolm's, and he does eventually agree to protect Barry. And Jillian says, I'm tired of people throwing away friends and family. You two work it out. As a trans person, she probably has experienced friends and family cutting her off. And Peter reveals Jerry's superhuman division as he suicides in the bath, which hurts the company. Which is, of course, the part that Jerry worries about. And Jessica and Trish talk about if Trish is Jessica's equal. And Trish actually says, let it go. Which, wow. You know, that, yeah. Trish legitimately has, she is, she's not the same person she was in season one. At least before, yeah, yeah, you know, the moment that she got a chance to get superpowers, you know, in season one, she was always eager to, to help out on the, you know, she, she wanted to try to help stop Kilgrave, and she was frustrated when, you know, she, she uh, yeah, when, when things failed there, she was really frustrated, and then season two, she's using the, the inhaler for the super strength, and then... By the end, she gets the, the permanent superpowers because of the um, the um, procedure. And, yeah, you know, at this point, the, the, the fact that she killed Alyssa, yeah, she, she's trying to, to herself go, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing, like, when you when you do something like that, something that you can never take back, you know, either you have to, you know, it doesn't have to be killing someone. Sometimes it's much, much less, but yeah, it's, you know, then you have to make the choice. Am I going to, you know, to try to process that and avoid it ever happening again? Or am I going to try to just learn to to live with that and go out and do it again and kith tells jerry i want nothing more to do with you jerry's actions have really backfired that is the kind of thing that can happen when you do unethical things and yeah you know we she's slowly losing control of the things in her life not only her body via als and Eric is very confident that he gave Jessica an orgasm, suggests he give her another, and she's into it. So that's, yeah, again, like, this, you know, we've seen her very blasé about casual sex a, a number of times. And, yeah, you know, it's not, um, what's the word? I get, you know, basically, she's not used to... Yeah, that's right. She did have a an ongoing relationship with Luke as well. So it is, you know, when she finds a man that she really is... As a... that she, Ah, what's the word? That she feels more of a... That, that she wants to be with for longer. Yeah. And Malcolm tells Barry she should take her medication. That's part of why she's reacted so negatively to Eric calling her crazy earlier. She does have a mental illness, and like many others, that means she ended up forced into a kind of work she didn't really want, in this case, sex work. And she tells Malcolm when she takes her pills, she doesn't feel like herself anymore, so she rarely does it. And despite having issues with Gore, she does still call him and leave Malcolm's place with him, She's a complex character, and I absolutely love it. And Jessica finds the bodies Greg has put in the container. And Trish attacks Greg, losing the advantage of him not knowing about her because she's not... Uh, she struggles with the... 
she, yeah, basically she feels like she can't let anyone else escape. You know, the, the, like, like I said, with Kilgrave, she didn't, she often didn't really have a choice. And now that, you know, she could try to stop Greg or she could try to save Jessica. And Trish expresses frustration at having lost Greg. Jessica points out she'd be dead otherwise. Trish apologizes for killing Alyssa. Jessica acknowledges Alyssa was killing people. Let's see. A lot of great character moments in this season. In, in all three seasons, really. That brings us to episode 6, a.k.a. Sorry Face. And... Yeah, you know, Gregory says Jessica didn't earn her powers. Tons of men don't earn what they have. They get it because of male privilege, even if not family and money. It's much harder for women to get what they're worth because of patriarchy. And once he realizes Eric has powers, he's also even more against him than, yeah. Let's see. And Jessica proves to Dorothy that Trish has powers by shoving her out the window. That's, yeah. I'm starting to wonder if that window is just specifically for, like, you know, people either going out the window or almost going out the window, like with the, the kid. I forget his name right now, but yeah. And Trish tells Dorothy, you made me. Dorothy feels like she's lost Trish again. And Greg explains he wasn't appreciated by his father and brother. And... I gotta say, um, so yeah, the, you know, the chef gives Jessica some information. Apparently Greg freaked out at him kissing him and he gives Jessica the, uh, the, the address. I guess... The implication is that he is, you know, possibly, like, gay and, and in denial about it. You know, the, the, he's, he's almost only ever killed men, and, yeah, that's, you know, that's basically his way of dealing with that. You know, if he, if he desires a man, he tries to, to kill him. And, yeah, you know, again, very accurate to a lot of real-life killers and, and would-be killers. <clears throat> um, you know, not, not all... Um, yeah, some, some of them, like, uh, mass shooters rather than serial killers. All I am is a man... Standing in front of his victim, asking him to say, I'm real. And Benowitz says his life is a lot better now that he's out. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. And, you know, he's telling Jaron, you know, take similar advice. And with Danny Rand and Ward out of the country, the Rand Corporation is going from Jerry's law firm to Benowitz's. So that's, yeah. Very sweet when Barry and Eric have each other back. And Barry seduces Malcolm, and he doesn't answer the phone when Zaya is calling. So he's basically choosing Barry. He says, you know, wants to feel like a man. So, again, that's a theme of the season, male fragility. Let's see. I think we may have unleashed him. Oh, crap. And that brings us to episode 7, a.k.a. the double half Wobbinger. And we learn that Jerry is representing Greg. You know, Jessica called Jerry specifically so that Greg would not get out. And Jerry went completely the other, you know, just, yeah. And, and again, you know, over the course of the season, Jerry comes to regret that. And, you know, she knew, like, Jessica is not want to 
making false accusations against people. She knows, you know, that's why they had a somewhat functioning relationship, you know, really all the way back in season one, basically. But yeah, you know, obviously Jerry wouldn't be working with Jessica at all if Jessica couldn't, you know, yeah, Jessica doesn't make accusations like that without being able to back them up. So she knows that Greg is a monster, and yeah, the the um yes, I have more. I will talk about later. yeah, and and Greg calls Jessica a feminist vindicator, which is like wow, they really yeah, that's that's exactly the kind of thing that someone like you know, there's there's so many people in in the real world that don't kill people, although a few of them do, but hate women for anything that those women have, you know. So, yeah, it's and, and would say stuff like feminist vindicator. And Jerry's clearly frustrated that he goes off script and he sends the press at Jessica... And Greg also challenges Jerry's abilities. Zay is mad at Malcolm, understandably. And... Yeah, Jess and Trish go to the small town. See, she be stomping around the planet, no longer stands alone. And the female cop would rather defend this white man that she thinks she knows over a woman that she has heard bad things about. Again, extremely relevant. This is the kind of thing that very often happens when a woman comes forward, reveals she has been sexually assaulted or raped. You know, the, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial... I'm not going to claim that Heard is innocent. And, yeah, you know, she she lied about, you know, but it was clearly a mutually abusive relationship. But because of a lot of people, you know, they, they think that they know Johnny Depp because, oh, he was in that movie I liked and that other movie I liked. And so... They, you know, and, and yeah, not only men, there were a number of, you know, I, I tried to avoid, so, so much of the coverage just seemed very gossipy, but The Take did a video, at least one video talking about the trial, and they showed a number of clips of, you know, female TikTokers who were making fun of Amber Heard and, you know, yeah, siding with, with Johnny Depp. You know, sadly, that is, uh, yeah, that, that does happen. I get why Trish is really frustrated by having to fake the car problem, but it is legitimately quite funny. You know, her, you know, I, th I think later she describes it to Jessica as having to play the dumb blonde and, you know, yeah, misusing the term triggering and this whole, well, I, or, or I guess saying... It, yeah, using it frivolously, uh, more than misused. It just, yeah, you know, the the she's like, no, I I dropped the keys and now I can't find them and the alarm just keeps going beep beep beep. Please help me. Just this whole thing and you can see like, obviously the cops don't realize it, but we the viewer, looking at her face, looking at her eyes, like she's like, I can't believe Jessica asked me to do this. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. You know, just yeah. And and that is also you know we can we can laugh at it but we can also understand her frustration. And ultimately, you know I think the fact that she does go on to to kill people, I think it's equal parts Jessica. You know Jessica is very worried that Trish is going to cross a line. And, you know in. In part, it is this thing of, you know, Dorothy was abusive of Trish and, and put in her head, you have to, you know, you owe the world, as she later puts it, as, as we see in that flashback. And, you know, so, so yeah, it's in part this drive she feels towards it, but it is also in part that she, um, what's the word? The, the fact that Jessica keeps saying no 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 just you know we can we can work together but you can't 
use your powers and yeah and Malcolm just straight walks into the meeting with Jerry and Zaya does not want Zaya involved with Gregory Jessica suggests Trish eat Cheetos and she says she's not a fan of anything that orange so she must not have voted for Trump the more I learn about her the more I like her until she starts killing people obviously and yeah Trish talks about the way people looked at her once they knew about her failed rehab what was it three failed rehab attempts and said it was freeing and Jerry and Zaya realize about their clients that Trish is um, trying to like punish the, the yeah and Jillian ha handles Malcolm very well, calls Jess to get confirmation before letting Malcolm look at the confidential files. I love when she... That is... Oh. Okay, yeah. That can wait. Um, I love when she tells Trish what Malcolm's face is saying when he doesn't verbally answer Trish. That is just so good. And... And, and also, you know, there's the line, if you were, when you were in my situation, you know that you would not have, you know, just let someone, you know, in and, and look at the confidential files. Let's see. And Jessica talks to Nathan's parents, realizes Greg buried him in the backyard, and Trish films the cop to keep her from shooting Jessica also extremely relevant it's definitely necessary to film cops otherwise we will never get justice for police brutality it's funny how the same conservatives that say that the patriot act isn't a big deal because only guilty people should have a problem with being under surveillance don't think that police should be held to that same standard so far this season there are a lot of cases where greg gets away with something because of white male privilege really glad that the show is pointing that out and the cop does thank Jessica, but not Trish. And I, I like that, you know, Jessica and the cop both know, you know, she's like, I looked over all these old cases. You know, this this kid did actually do the, you know, she's like, I know. But sometimes you got to let, you know, sometimes you have to look the other way or something like that. Want to drink, want to sleep, want to spell out what I feel without voiceover. And Zaya realizes Malcolm and the masked woman know each other. And Malcolm and Jessica disgusted at Greg being allowed to teach kids wrestling because of a technicality. And. Right, and Trish lets a press photographer take her picture wanting some positive attention and Jessica agrees to wrestle Greg beats him on camera in front of all the students who are cheering her on and puts puts her foot on his chest so that was very much a you know um what was it Lindsay Ellis said in response to that you know the the um the poster of the the dark knight rises and catwoman's um heeled shoe on the 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 bat symbol hashtag misandry let's see you know yeah there are some women who hate men but misandry is no no you know, not remotely comparable to misogyny, since misogyny is actually institutional, systemic, and literally law. So, so yeah, Gregory is a guy who believes that it is more difficult for a man than for a woman in today's society. He has done well, but does not get the recognition the countless pieces of media have told him he deserves. So, yeah. We're looking at toxic masculinity. This is a person who hates Jessica, feels that her power threatens his masculinity. So I appreciate that he does also 
kill men. Some people say that means it can't be misogyny that drives any of his hateful actions. And this is arguing against that. Let's see. Recently, there has been some discussion about if the left helps men. I think the Cavernacle video was excellent. I don't have a lot to add, but I do just want to underline feminism does help men as well as women. The patriarchy does hurt men, although not as much as women are hurt by it. If you, like me, are a male feminist, you're not betraying your gender. We are not looking to make things as bad for men as they are for women. In general, minorities are not trying to make things as bad for white men as they have been for minorities. We're trying to empower minorities so that things are equal. You shouldn't feel a need to be above others in order to feel you have a strong and positive identity. Instead of focusing so much on yourself as a man, form your identity around how you help minorities. And that brings us to episode 8, aka camera friendly. And yeah, Trish's pictures cause some problems. And the thing that bothers Dorothy about the pictures is the costume. Insta Yap, is that an Instagram parody? They also had one a few episodes ago. I think Peter uploaded his video to. I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be Facebook or YouTube. I guess a mix of the two. Or maybe it was just Facebook, actually, thinking about it. Yeah. And Trish gets Dorothy to host instead of her, knowing that Dorothy wouldn't refuse once she's already on camera. And she doesn't realize that Trish is going to walk away until she is walking away. That was that was quite funny. And she's like, so, Mother's Day. And her co-host is like, that's six months away. Which makes which means you have plenty of time to buy a gift. And, you know, bringing in Dorothy. And obviously Dorothy is not going to, you know... You know, basically the way Dorothy thinks is, well, if Trish is saying on camera that I'm really important and I don't show up on camera, I'm making Trish look bad. Sure, it was Trish who started us down this road, but all I have to do is get on camera, you know, and yeah. And I forget who came up with calling her Beanie Girl. It might have been Jessica, and Trish is like... Never never call me that again. Just, yeah. And we see that Costa is gay and he and his partner are trying to adopt. And to reassure his partner, he kisses and hugs him. Very sweet. Great representation. Wish there was more of it, but... Yeah, really good for what it is. And we see that Zaya edited the video, so Jerry doesn't know that Malcolm talked to the masked girl. And Jerry says, don't defend her kind. So Jerry's a powerful woman who's trying to stop other powerful women. And yeah, sadly, that does happen. And Trish tries to get the waiter to use information using a plan from one of her episodes of It's Patsy, but the guy remembers the episode, thinks it's candid camera. That was also quite funny. And it's, I think she has done this before, but usually people don't remember, but... Yeah, you know, the the we were told earlier that some people are like you know, watch the the show all the time even though it's been off the air for you know, I guess decades by this point. You know, so yeah, he that was that was quite funny. And and it is also like every so often we'll get a little bit of the, the, you know, we hear the It's Patsy theme song. Here we're told, you know, I, f I forget the details, but yeah, we're told some about this plot of an episode. And in one of the later episodes in the season, also, we hear the, you know, like it's basically like the wrap up line of the episode. And it is very much a children's light hearted show wrap-up line, maybe especially for the pilot, you know, with the thing of, today I learned it doesn't matter if you're a lion or a mouse or a turtle that just couldn't handle one more day of fourth grade, you know, that just, yeah, wow, that really is very much, yeah, very, very Disney Channel, which now that the show's on Disney Plus is very appropriate, I guess. 
and we see that Greg got past the surveillance paying a guy to, you know, pretend to be him. And Jessica destroys his awards and degrees, and he gets so angry that he actually, you know, he, he shouts obscenities on the street as he's watching the video. Does Yeah. And Greg makes another video, so Trish and Jessica get Jessica on live TV, and it's Tempe who says they rarely do live TV, possibly acknowledging that criticism of Luke Cage season one. And Jessica is not happy about being asked if she's responsible and Dorothy's really proud of, of how it went. Because <laughs> it is, like, you know, she's, she did spend some of her life, you know, she, th her adopting Jessica was a manager's decision more than a mother's decision. I forget exactly, but they talk about it in, not not this season, but season one or season two, that she wanted to, was it maybe to make Trish look good look loving maybe that oh she has a sister because there was some kind of problem i yeah let's see and i hear that a lot of women love again from the take i hear a lot of women love true crime shows so it does make a lot of sense to have gregory on this show and yeah it turns out gregory wasn't after mona lee but the guards accept that Jessica's there to help because of the video, so at least some good came of that. And... Let's see, Gregory returns to his place, the cops want answers, but he points out he can make it look like police harassment. So, yeah, this is a man who manipulates people using the media, a lot of misogynists do today. A lot of people have gone down a misogynist rabbit hole on the internet. And one of the reporters suggests that Jessica, a woman, might owe reparations to Gregory, a white man, which is, wow. And Jerry talks about controlling the narrative important for women with power and, in general, progressive causes, although she herself is obviously not progressive. Let's see. You know, one of the problems, one of the reasons that progressive causes are not viewed as positively today as, you know, if you look at, like, just the things that we progressives want, like, yeah, you know, it's driven by ethics, We're, it's, it's driven by empathy, but a lot of conservatives are controlling the, the narrative, controlling the conversation, and that's why there isn't more support for progressive causes. And there is still a lot for, for many of them. Let's see. Yeah, and, and Jerry says she's coming for Jessica and the masked woman. And we think Gregory's there for Trish. Turns out she was there for Dorothy. And Trish is about to kill Gregory. Jessica tries to stop her and the episode ends. And that brings us to episode 9, a.k.a. I did something today. And Gregory is still alive. Jessica will not let Trish kill him. And Jessica cleans up Trish, even deals with her nails and buffs her situation. So yeah, Jerry is a woman with power othering Trish, another woman with power, calling her a monstrous powered creature. And that's the thing, you know, if you... If you want to, um, what's the word? You know, it, there's there's historical basis for trying to turn people against women by calling them things like creature. You know, one of the things done to of you know back when the uh, back when slavery was a thing in America. You know, you had people claiming that black women were not really women, you know, and yeah, it's, you know, because the moment that you, if you, if you look at someone and see their humanity, you find it a lot harder to be brutal to them, and slavery was brutal. And that's, you know, Jerry is basically asking for brutality against Trish, 
And of course the reward is just for show. Jerry expects Malcolm to find the masked woman. It's to make her look good. To offer a reward. And Jillian intends to quit before Jessica manages to convince her otherwise. I really love her on the phone telling off reporters, How about you let her bury her mother, asshole? And Laurent, talking to Jerry, starts by saying, Are you good? And Jerry isn't quite sure what he means until he follows up with, At your job. Because, you know, she can't really honestly claim to be a good person. And again, it's it's these little things like how, you know, oh, you know, I didn't mean for, you know, Jerry didn't mean for Kith to be endangered by Trish, you know, but she showed up unannounced, so what can you do? And Eric wishes he stopped Officer Nussbaum. And Eric explains about his father, the one and only time he used his power for good. His father was abusing Barry, and the mother OD'd on pills the day that the father was taken. Barry was mad at Eric, saying it wasn't his truth to tell. I feel like this might be a criticism of the Me Too movement, which, as long as it comes from progressives, from feminists, is perfectly okay. And I have heard some say, you know, one problem with the Me Too movement, it's messed up that it requires the women to relive the trauma, and that means that we need another solution. And I do also think... You know, I, th I think we, we got to keep the Me Too movement going until we think of something better. But I do think something better is possible. And I, I do hope that we get there. Because, yeah, you know, like the idea is when, uh, if you confront misogynists with the truth about this, you know, that should inspire some empathy in them, but a lot of them just don't believe it no matter what. And a lot of them don't think that it's even wrong. You know, that's the problem. And, yeah, it's sadly, I, th I think it's going to be a long time before misogyny, you know, it's, a, it's an uphill battle, but we, it is one we have to fight as much as we can. I gotta say, Jessica making several careful jumps to avoid touching the puddle on the floor reminded me of one of the, maybe it was Half-Life, maybe it was one of the, the I guess today we'd call it DLC add-ons, expansion packs. Uh, I think it was Opposing Forces, and in that it was like more than just disgusting, it was actually like, I, th I think there was maybe electrified water on the floor, but just, yeah. And Trish is very upset Jessica destroyed evidence to protect... Uh, yeah. Malcolm com comes clean with Jerry, who threatens Zaya. Costa explains he's been made the fall guy. And Kith is willing to use Jerry's remorse, but she does not want them to get back together. And Jerry recognizes Trish in the, the reflection, which was legitimately a clever... Like, I didn't realize at the time that that was something that might happen. But, yeah, you know, a, a turned-off monitor can reflect... Yeah, and there, there was some light in the room to make... Yeah, you yeah, know, it felt credible. And the cops come to search Jess's place... I gotta say, at first, it felt like it came out of nowhere with, you know, Jess thinking, oh, Eric killed Nussbaum. Let's see. You know, I, I thought the cops would be connected to Jerry realizing Trish was the masked woman. But over the next couple of episodes, you know, it is... It's, you know, the, the Trish's vigilantism is escalating. Getting out of her control. She didn't mean for people to suspect Jessica of murder. She didn't mean for Jerry to, to blackmail her. You know, these are... Yeah. That brings us to episode 10, a.k.a. Hero Pants. Jessica's does not have much of an alibi. She was home alone, so while she did not kill Nussbaum, there are two burglars who are intensely messed up. 
or more than two if you want to go by the third and fourth how did that how did that become a series like i get making one movie but multiple now let's see we're not finished then goddamn arrest me i i i'm really going to miss jessica she's such a great character Dorothy planned the funeral, but it was with Jerry's firm. And Trish talks to the cops. Jessica explains about Eric. So, yeah, based on... Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, based on the end of this episode, this is when she realized that she could work with Eric. And, again, you know, Jessica's trying to make things right she she thinks that you know yeah basically she's she's not completely realized or accepted that trish you know trish has changed she's not coming back she's not backing down you know because she says i yeah, in the finale <clears throat> she says that she saw it in her eyes when trish shot Alyssa, and yeah you know, she she's struggled to, to cope with that. So maybe that's part of why, you know, and, and yeah, you know, the people close to her are her weak spot. Her, you know, the one weakness Jessica Jones has is that she gives a shit. When she gives a shit. And yeah, you know, it's she's, she's al always tried to protect Trish and only slowly comes to admit to herself that, you know, it's not just Trish that needs protecting, you know, she also needs to be stopped. I really appreciate that Dorothy's death has consequences. I think David Lynch would too, considering Twin Peaks, or so I hear from the analysis of very talented YouTuber Maggie Mayfish, and, yeah, I, I really like how, you know, now that Dorothy is, is dead, there's this, yeah, and, and maybe, I think, maybe especially from this episode on, you know, it goes back and forth between things she said or did that were nice and helped people, and her being abusive, you know, like, Dorothy Walker is a fictional character, but she's written... Like, it feels like she's a real person. She made mistakes. She did some good. Not either or. I really appreciate that this is not a bitter depiction or that she's just disposable. And, you know, in, in general, I feel like this show has done, at least makes efforts to keep, you know, like, in, in a lot of American media the people who get taken out, whether by the good guys or the bad guys, are frequently disposable. Like, there might be just, you know, one or two of them that, like, with their dying breath, manages to, to say something or do something, but by and large, they're kind of just, you know... And, and I love Prison Break. All five seasons, I think, are really, really great, although, you know, like I say in the review, there are some issues with it. One of the things that bothered me about that is that the longer, like, after a while, there's a lot of just disposable, you know, good guys and bad guys alike take out a lot of people that we never get to know, and it doesn't seem to necessarily weigh on their conscience. And and these things, I, I get, you know, it's it's a... You know, the, the American identity is in part based on this idea of these disposable, you know, you, you go fight people and that's good. That makes the world better. Uh, you know, where, you know, a number of other countries have, to, you know, have more perspective, have, have, yeah, have a more nuanced view. You know, if, if you look at world history, there are, countless countries that have fought each other 
and now are allies, you know, so, yeah, let's see, yeah, and Jessica talks to Jerry about the will, she expected to see Berman, but honestly, Steve had, has been really jumpy since Eminem shot him, and Dorothy shit talks Jess in her will, that's, wow, and I do appreciate, you know, the, the one thing she does actually, you know, Dorothy realized, oh, Jessica really loves that one chair, so she wills it to her. That was, that was really a great, uh, yeah. And Jess tells Jerry, you know that you're dying, what are you doing? And I think that, yeah, that, that is when she starts, okay, so this is episode, t episode 10 of the 13. Yeah, you know, in episode 13, she does do the right thing, even as, like, you know, she knows that some of these things could go really badly, and, you know, it's not only for herself, it's not only because it's right, it's also, you know, for example, to, for, for Kith, to, so that she can be with Kith. And Jessica answers Dorothy's phone, and it's a girl who's really happy about advice Dorothy gave her. She got the part, and Jessica tells her that Dorothy is dead. And Malcolm and Zaya talk and break up. I really appreciate that her character is written as such a good communicator, honest without being hurtful. Like, you know, yeah, she calls Malcolm cruel, but he deserved that. You know, she's not... Again, like, there's so many American media representations of women leaving a relationship where she's, like, kicking and screaming and breaking his stuff and, and all this. And that's just not, you know, that's not who Zaya is. There are countless women. And especially, yeah, and it's, you know, Zaya is a, uh, an African-American woman. There are so many negative stereotypes about African-Americans you know, some, including sometimes especially women, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, they were, people would try to deny their humanity because, again, you know, if, like, it's, it's one thing, like, there are a lot of men where if you tell them that man is dangerous, they're, that's it, they're not going to have any empathy for that man, but it is, it can be more difficult if they see a woman, you know, there is, like, it is in our culture, it is in Western culture that we want to, I'm, I'm not American, it is in Western culture to, to encourage men to protect women, so, you know, if they, if they're seeing something bad happen to a, you know, to a black woman, you know, they rationalize it with, oh, they're always so angry and violent and crazy and just, yeah. And Jerry and Kith talk, and Kith does not like Jerry saying she'll hurt Dimitri. It's a principle that you don't hurt people, and as Kith walks away, Jerry trips, and because she doesn't know about the ALS, Kith doesn't even stop to help, even though she clearly notices. And, you know, and yeah, in the finale, Jerry tells her about the ALS, and she does, you know... She has empathy, some empathy for her, but she also doesn't... What's the word? You know, yeah, she's not going to stay with her. You know, she takes it better than Randy the Ram Robinson's daughter, Stephanie, when she finds out, but still. Don't get me wrong. Stephanie has every right to be upset. Anyway... And Jessica pretended she was there to be with Eric, but really she just needed unimpeded access to his apartment so she could find his research. And Jess and Trish talk before the funeral. Grieving is one of those universal and yet taboo things. We'll all do it at least once in our lives, if not for people and for pets. So it's extremely important to do it well in media. And yeah, this does a really great job. I, I really appreciated that conversation between the two of them. And yeah. And Malcolm and Brianna, now that she, the, the character has expressed that she goes by Brianna, that is what I will refer to her as, she really does do a great job recovering, um, you know, she, yeah, much, 
she she comes across as much healthy in a much better place and they kiss and undress again without male gaze which i really appreciate and jessica points out to trish that the funeral will be over in less than an hour suggests they go bowling after maybe she'll get three strikes and Trish talks to some of the people at the funeral who are really happy about advice Dorothy gave them. Despite Jessica and Trish figuring that few people would actually show up, a lot did. And yeah, you know, like based on what we see, she did appear to really get like the advice that, you know, the, the story that Trish tells the, the eulogy at, at the eulogy. Yeah, she gave really good advice. And I, I, I suppose the reason that, you know, part of the, the, sto the, the reason for the story, which, you know, the, the 11th episode cuts back and forth between us seeing the story and then present day, you know, part of it is that this was the, um, you know, this was her getting the big job as, you know, it's Patsy, and the... Um, Ah, what's it called? Let's see. So that, yeah, that was part of it. And so, you know, so, so yeah, it's for the audience's benefit also because it, it explains, you know, you, you owe the world is an extremely important thing. Um, but, but yeah, it's also, you know, when Trish thinks about Dorothy, that is one of the big things that, yeah. Let's see. I quite like the picture Jessica found and her and Trish remembering the day that went normal wrong. And yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, because she's always, she's always been taking pictures. She's always had the, the camera. She didn't mean to take a picture of that, but she recognizes immediately that that was the, yeah. And what we hear of Trish's eulogy is good. And the cops are going to arrest Jessica at the funeral. And Jessica realizes there are bruises on Trish's wrists. So that's, yeah. Follows her, gets arrested by the police. And then the end of the ep... Yeah, the, the episode ends on Tr Eric and Trish working together. Eric shocked at how far Trish is going. This is why we saw that she was upset at thinking Sal died when she saved Eric from drowning. She's now very far away from that emotionally and psychologically. That brings us to episode 11. A.K.A. Hellcat, which is what Trish goes by in the comics. So yeah, the, the episode opens with Dorothy and 10-year-old Trish. The story Trish is telling at the funeral. The episode keeps cutting between it and the present day. It was one of the biggest, not only positive, but also negative, things that Dorothy pushed on Trish. And it is the beginning of Trish, the media personality. So we see how far she has fallen. It's especially heartbreaking when it cuts back to Dorothy saying, you owe the world, as Trish decides that she's going to be a lethal vigilante. And just to rub it in, the It's Patsy theme song plays over the end credits so yeah this episode gives us trish's perspective on things that we've seen fills us in on what she was doing really nicely done yeah this might be the best paste of the three seasons overall and we see hellcat claw up gregory's face i appreciate that when malcolm and trish talk despite the fact that they used to be intimate he isn't cruel in general, because again, you know, that is, there there are sadly some people in the real world where they'll be very uh, harsh with their ex, but a lot of people aren't, and yeah, you know, it's just, it's a, it's much more healthy if you can be, you know, more, yeah. And let's see... Yeah, in general on the show, that's a thing, so it hits harder when someone is actually really harsh with their ex, like Wendy and Kith, really underlines how bad Jerry is to a lot of people close to her. You know, everything with her is transactional. And Trish confronts Greg in his hospital bed. And Trish finds the picture of Dorothy that Greg took, enraging her further. 
I really appreciate that this is a show where female rage is not a source of comedy, but taken seriously. And Trishinary confront Nussbaumer. She accidentally kills him, like how she almost killed Sal when she saved Eric. That's the thing when you have access to something powerful that you're not used to. Like the real life equivalent to this would be a handgun, not superpowers. But yeah, you can really hurt people, and she's not used to being this strong. I appreciate that the episode is not trying to whitewash Dorothy. We do still see her physical and emotional abuse of Trish. And yeah, by the end of the episode, we realize the show is, in fact, the one Trish was famous for. I believe it is called It's Patsy. And Jerry tells Trish about the evidence she has and to steal from Dimitri. And we realize Eric was the one who called the cops on Jess to protect Trish. He didn't realize Trish would beat Jace to death. And we see, you know, part of it was part of why she beat her beat Jace to death is she imagined Greg in his place. Let's see. And yeah, we see that she's not bothered by what she has done. That brings us to episode 12 aka a lot of worms i love that trish gets into the elevator through like the roof or top of the elevator very t1000 really does underline she's becoming a villain very powerful sibling energy in basically every scene that eric and brianna share and i really like when they're both happy that the other one is okay and, and that kind of thing you know, and, and she she's like, so, I'm going to take a shower and ask him, hey, Malcolm, would you like to join me? And Eric is like, ah. And she's like, I knew that would get you. <laughs> when this season started, I thought that there would be a lot of people killed by Greg in the present rather than the past. I'm really glad that they went this different way. He hasn't killed many people since we started seeing him, you know. You know, basically only the person we really don't know who's from the start of the season and then Dorothy. But his murder of Dorothy has wide ramifications. Way too much TV moves on from the victim very quickly. This focuses on what it does to Trish for him to murder Dorothy instead of having a huge body count in the present. And Trish wakes up to find herself chained. Malcolm says, I'm not sure who you are anymore. Now he's got amnesia. Jessica says, the pain would have found me one way or another. And Greg drugged Jessica, but she knew, and it was the, yeah. I can't help but notice that Greg's face looks more like Jigsaw than Jigsaw did in Punisher Season 2. Let's see. And Trish explains when she was seven, she saved her mother from her father's beating. Like a baby, Lisbeth Salander. She heard a thump, then saw blood. Even when violence is only talked about, it's still off-screen on these shows. Not all violence, but, you know, it's, again, it's cost-cutting. It would be if they showed it, is what I'm saying. And Greg confesses, not knowing that Jessica is... F uh, let's, <laughs> yeah, Greg... And I can take care of that real quick without any problem as well. So there we go, and... Right. Now, Eric does... Yeah, Greg doesn't know that he's being filmed, and so he confesses. Jessica manages to bait him into it. Why the fuck are you smiling? And Eric feels like a hero, which is unusual. And Jessica calls Costa, who's playing with his adopted daughter, adorable. And we see Jessica kept the fingernails scrapings from Trish... And Trish says, I see their faces when I close my eyes, and sometimes when I don't. And, yeah, you know, again, that is, like, that is true for a lot of people who kill someone, even by accident. Malcolm points out, once an addict, always an addict, and Trish admits she's now addicted to feeling like she's a force for change. 
and Trish attacks Greg and the episode ends with Jerry and Jessica seeing Greg killed by Trish this time clearly not an accident and that brings us to the very last episode of Jessica Jones aka everything I really hope that they bring, you know, now that the multiverse is a thing, I feel like, because, like, okay, for sure, the the events of the uh, Marvel Netflix shows can't have happened in the MCU without anyone talking about, like, some of these really major things. But, you know, multiverse... Hopefully, they bring back. So, yeah, we see at the start of this episode, Jerry is worried about herself, you know, to tell Trish that I didn't, you know, what was it? I didn't know that it was this bad or something. You know, I'm nothing like him. Some just, yeah. And, let's see, the, um... Yeah, Luke shows up to give a pep talk, and um, yeah, some I, I saw at least one critic who really didn't like his cameo. I thought it was fine. Um, I guess. Let's see. I mean, they knew. Um, when they were making this episode, they knew that the show was not going to get more seasons, at least in the in the near future. So his appearance is maybe, you know, he's he shows up to, you know, yeah. I already mentioned I'm I'm spoiling. So spoiling Luke Cage season two. You know, he basically end up ended up. A crime lord and yeah uh, I guess this is either saying that he is uh, what's the word you know that, that there are limits to how far he'll go maybe it is this thing of uh, what's the word um or maybe he considers this part of of the crime lord stuff. Let's see, and yeah, Jessica finds Trish via the the phone thing, and they talk about you know prison, about control, and I do appreciate you know Jessica based Jessica could have had Eric walk in immediately. But she did want to give Trish a chance to turn herself in. Bef well, yeah, yeah, yeah. To admit that she had to turn herself in before bringing in Eric. And then once she brings in Eric, yeah. And it's it's very noir to have the the suspect escape and then have to track them down and this thing. Yeah. And yeah, Eric proves. That, you know, Trish has now gone into, you know, she's now a bad person, which she wasn't before. And Trish, you know, Jessica points out, you know more than, you know better than most that he's not lying. But she struggles to accept it. She's like, no, no, I'm, I'm sure it's just his own guilty conscience that's making him, you know, she trusted that he was right about Jace Montero. So... You know, she's she's refusing to accept something that, uh, yeah. Let's see, and... Um, yeah, so she escapes out the window. She had better luck on that than Amy did. And... Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and Jerry sends Trish after Dimitri. And Trish, like, she would have killed Dimitri. She, she you know, she's 
attacking him, getting him to, you know, to admit what he did. But then the daughter comes in and is scared, you know, so, so, yeah. And, and when Dimitri realizes his daughter is, is there to, to protect him, he doesn't, you know, he's not like trying to take advantage of that. He's legitimately worried about his daughter, you know, and yeah, so let's see, he, he cheated on taxes and he beat his wife, and then he says, but I'm getting help. And it doesn't, you know, Trish doesn't stop at that and say, wait, 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 Jerry has lied to me before. Maybe when she said this guy was a monster, she was, you know, trying to, to get me to, to, you know. You know, she, she only stops when, when the, the daughter arrives. That's when it just becomes impossible for her to ignore you know and she quotes the famous ben affleck line i'm not the bad guy let's see and um yeah so so jessica and jerry talk and jessica manages to get her on board with a plan and Zaya shows up to Malcolm's apartment to pick up her old stuff. And, you know, Brianna shows up behind him and she's like, no, no, it's, it's not what you think. It's just an arrangement. He's a good guy. And Zaya says, you fooled another one, which is a, a great, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, she legitimately does not believe that he is good you know and that is like basically malcolm has been struggling with whether or not he's a good person through all three seasons and yeah i if if they make more jessica jones i really hope they bring him into it as well because i'm fascinated to see where the next uh, yeah and let's see yeah, and, and Jerry says, you know, Trish will be, you know, she doesn't name her, but she says the masked woman will be arrested soon. Ah. And we're back. So, uh, I guess in case this becomes its own video, I will just say these are, this is Jessica Jones, season three thoughts and this is about the final episode episode 13 aka everything so continuing from where i got to yeah so so you know jerry knew that trish would show up at her place but she did not realize that kith would drop by on an and, you know, Trish takes Kith as a human shield. And the, the, um, what's it called? Um, ah, what's it called? Um, Yeah, if I recall, Trish is still rationalizing what she's doing. And, you know, turns out Jerry has a gun, but the... Yeah, does not go as... And, um... Yeah, you know, uh, Trish says Jessica isn't willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, giving up everything. And, yeah, Jessica tells the world Trish is the masked woman. A lot happens this episode. It's, it's very impressive that it doesn't feel overstuffed. You know, it's, it's appropriately big. Let's see. And, uh, hold on, what does that say? 
Right, and yeah, Jer um, Jerry is helping Trish get to, what was it, Thailand. 17 hours in a coffin, which of course, you know, yeah, very uncomfortable, probably makes her think about Dorothy. And Eric is is checking the the hashtag, and one of the is to you know to, to Jessica. I don't know where Trish is, but you should comb your hair. Wow, that is, yeah. I have never been a woman online or anywhere else, but I hear that is what a lot of women who are online get. These kinds of pointless, just yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so so you know, Jessica gets to the the coffins and you know, at at first she's opening every coffin and then she's like, Oh no, wait, better to, you know, knock on them because you know, the the, the noise will be different based on if the coffin is empty or full. Let's see. And um yeah, there's a there's a chase and you know Trish thinks that knocking over a barrel is gonna really slow down Jessica and Jessica just, you know like kicks it so it you know knocks down but you know once Trish knocks out the light, you know she has the upper hand for a lot of the, the fight. Most of the fight, really. Um, because, yeah, you know, she can... Obviously, she can kick further than Jessica can swing with her hands. And Jessica isn't really much of a, a kicker. So, the... Yeah. I thought they did a really great job. That's also... Like, when you film st something like that, like... Okay, we gotta convey that Jessica can't see Trish. But, like, if the audience also can't see Trish... It's not necessarily going to have that good of an impact. So just, yeah, you know, the, the um, yeah, that, that's really, um, what's the word? That was, that was a, I, I feel like they did a really good job. And then we get some shots that are not quite POV, but we're still, we're getting the benefit of the, the seeing in, in darkness, which is also like when the, the first time in the this season when it was mentioned, oh, I can see in the dark, you know, it sounded like, oh, you know, just listing all for powers now, I guess. It doesn't seem like that, but, but now it's actually really important. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, Trish even grabs the, um, gets out her, her knife. And the way she's standing, like, I don't, yeah, they, they don't actually say it, but I'm almost certain that's supposed to be a visual, you know, yeah, they didn't feel the need to edit it in, but, you know, that she, she looks almost exactly like Greg, you know, uh, dressed all in black, the only thing not covered is the face, knife, combat stance, yeah, you know, she she isn't and and she does she she acknowledges with the with Costa after I'm the bad guy. Let's see. And um Yeah, and and I think it's Jessica who says, you know, this is who you were all along. you had this inside you all along. Some something like that. And you know, she does try to attack with a knife and Jessica, you know, she she takes the it's it's not pleasant obviously but yeah a knife through the hand she'll live you know and that's a way to stop Trish because once the knife is in the hand you know how is Trish gonna continue attacking with it it just means that Jessica has to be quick about finishing off the fight but yeah um let's see. Yeah, and uh, yeah, right. Uh, see, I just wrote C, standing for Costa, 
charges, and then T for Trish. So I thought, wait, Costa didn't charge at Trish. Oh, right. Costa reads the charges to Trish. And yeah, you know, she's she's not trying to defend herself. She's just like, yeah, it's, you know, I became the bad guy. And Jess says she, she uh, let's see. Okay, this I gotta, um, hmm, um, yeah, I guess, okay, yeah, so, the, um, let's see. Um, yeah, you know, Jessica says she doesn't trust Eric, but she does, you know, make sure that Costa and Eric can work together. And Jessica leaves the key with Malcolm, you know, still legitimately believing that he can be the, the hero. And Jessica watches as Trish goes into a helicopter and is, uh, you know, taken to the raft. And, you know, there's a little bit of eye contact even now. I will admit, I don't think I completely 100% understand, but... The fact that Jessica shows up means that she hasn't... It's not that she now hates Trish and doesn't think that there's any, you know, she does still, but, like, if Jessica really wanted a conversation between the two of them, I'm thinking she could probably have Jerry arrange, you know, so, so, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, there's not supposed to be a conversation. Jessica doesn't want them to have a conversation, and Trish, you know, the, the eye contact, like, there's probably both some of, like, her, like, blaming Jessica for how things ended up. But it looks to me also like there's some acceptance in there. You know, like, she... Yeah, she feels like this is how, you know... Because, you know, you can say many things about Trish, but she's been fairly consistent. Bad guys need to be stopped. from Right from season one, you know... And, yeah, uh, Jessica is going to go as close as she can to Mexico, which is, you know, El Paso, Texas. But then Kilgrave makes his, uh, you know, that is something, like, I don't think he showed up in, in Defenders at all. But other than, like, all three seasons, he makes at least one, at least voice cameo or something. You know, he wasn't... He wasn't in a huge amount of the second season either, but the first season he was, you know, ever present, even though they weren't in the same place right away. Hmm. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, let's see. The, um... But, but yeah, you know, and he, he gloats, he's petty like that, and, you know, obviously at this point it is not actually him, it's not like his ghost or some part of his life force is still, no, no, what it is, is that he, he made such an impression on her that some, you know, she knows if he were, you know, yeah, she, um, some part of him is in her subconscious, and, yeah, you know, she's giving up, and of course, Kilgrave gloats, and that gets her to, you know, leave behind the the ticket, and, uh, yeah, you know, the camera pulls away as she leaves, and some music plays, which I thought at first might be, you know, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, um, Joan Jett. But I looked it up, and apparently it isn't. Or maybe 
what I found was a cover, or maybe Joan Jett did a cover, regardless. Let's see. Uh, yeah, and, and Stan Lee is, is uh, you know, um, what's it called? It, it's dedicated to Stanley or so, something like that, you know, in the in the end credits. So yeah, like, um, they could definitely follow this up, but if this is the last we see of Jessica in, you know, live action anytime soon, um, you know, this is also, like, they are saying, yeah, you know, some part of her wants to quit, but she realizes, no, she has to keep fighting, and yeah, you know, if they, uh, I don't know what form it would be, but if she shows up again, you know, they could have her, yeah, you know, she could be a full-on hero in, in the wake of this season, like, in a, in an MCU movie, uh, she could just be there as a sort of, what's the word, like, um, she could be investigating for, for someone, you know, um, and they could have, yeah, you know, they could have more with, with Eric and, more with Eric and Costa working together and just, yeah. Um, let's see, that is it for the episode. Uh, right, um, so in... In the first two seasons, I, I considered talking about this in my thoughts videos on those, but ended up not doing it, so now that, you know, this might be the last time, Jessica Jones, at least for a while, uh, I wanted to mention, you know, in the first two seasons, there were instances where characters would urinate on themselves. Obviously, this is not fun to talk about or think about, but it does happen in a number of rape cases, so, yeah, unpleasant, but realistic. I quite appreciate that. And, yeah, um, that's it for, for Marvel Netflix. I'll, I'll record the review soon, maybe later today. Um, depends on the time. I'll, I'll figure out. Um, so, Marvel Netflix, not comparing them to anything but each other. Worst to best, the only one I don't love is Iron Fist Season 1. Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, The Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Punisher Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Luke Cage Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 3, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 1. And, yeah, I decided I wanted to give brief, um, yeah, a few words about why each of these seasons is when... Uh, in the order, you know, so that you know why I rated them, the, ranked them the way I did. So, the reason Iron Fist Season 1 is last is the characters are so inconsistent. In uh, the, the reason Daredevil Season 2 isn't higher is that the ninja action ends up bleeding together into a mush. Now, um, the reason Defenders is low, it's, I found it compelling, I like it more than most people apparently did. It's not quite as good at examining relevant social issues as the ones above it, and at the end of the day, I do think it could have done more, considering that all of the solo shows do. So yeah, uh, the reason Punisher Season 1 is behind Season 2, I don't think it was necessary to spend so much time on Frank avenging his family. Uh, the reason Punisher Season 2 is where it is, I think it really works that Frank is choosing to help Amy. It has nothing to do with his family. He's not even getting revenge. He's stopping someone from what they're doing to protect her. In fact, if he still wanted a family, he would go with Beth. Uh, the, so yeah, the Iron Fist Season 2, one of the best sequel seasons and how it uses the character set up before the season. Daredevil Season 3 is more focused than Season 2. Almost everything above this one is Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. And both shows use the fact that they are about minorities to explore social issues that affect those minorities. So yeah, Luke Cage Season 2, since Season 1 made the point that black men are not inherently scary or dangerous, and that one having superpowers does not turn him into a threat to civilians, only to criminals, it really works that they decided after that it was okay to make Luke more complex and anti-heroic. He still thinks he's doing the right thing, but he's doing, 
you know, he, he thinks he's doing the wrong thing for the right reason. And yeah, you know, the, what was it um, B-Dub said? If you, if you, uh, if you're the lord of crime, you're still a crime lord, something like that, you know. Luke Cage Season 1 felt more focused and less padded than Season 2. Daredevil Season 1 is definitely the most focused season of all of Marvel Netflix, and I don't really blame the others for not being able to, to match that, and I think it would have been boring if all of them had just been like that. So, uh, Jessica Jones Season 3, I think it really worked to explore Trish, you know, becoming a villain, and the... Yeah, exploring Dorothy. Yeah, uh, the, uh, yeah. Season two, Jessica getting her mother back temporarily. Trish being addicted to strength. Jerry struggling with a ALS. And the reason that Jessica Jones season one is my absolute favorite of the Marvel Netflix shows is the exploration of Jessica recovering from the trauma inflicted on her by Kilgrave and working so hard to prevent him from victimizing others just grabbed me from start to finish. Like, I could not. Holy crap, I'm going to miss this show. Um, I'm going to miss all of them. Yes, even Iron Fist. I would not be saying that if I'd only seen season one, but season two, yeah. So, uh, a few critic quotes. Uh, where season two is meandering, season three is laser focused. Nearly everything comes together and connects. The exception is Malcolm's subplot, which starts fine, doesn't stay that way. The best acting, Catherine, uh, yeah. I can't believe I'm blanking on her. Ka Carrie Ann Moss does, even though not all of the material they give her is great. The action is better than season one and two, and Trish is you know, quite appropriately brutal. The villain's creepy, but after a while it feels like the writers are going through the motions. Not as good as with Kilgrave. Yeah, I don't... Um, I agree with the positive things he said about this season. I don't really agree with the negative things he said about the seasons, but yeah. Um... Really, really loved this uh, this season. These three seasons, it, yeah. Most of Marvel Netflix, Iron Fist season one is the only season that I don't love, and it's not like it got better. It got a lot better as it went, um, and season two is so like really, really great. I guess that is what I have to say, other than the stuff I'll be putting in the spoiler-free review. I guess, um, yeah, uh, I, I, honestly, if they, if they bring back Jessica, I would like for them to have something about each of the characters that are still alive by the end of this season, like, you know, obviously they can't talk about wh what happened to Alyssa next, but, or, or Dorothy, but, yeah, like, even, like, you know, Brianna isn't a huge part of the season overall, but she was still interesting. I'd like to see, like, yeah, maybe maybe just a brief mention of, oh, she's, you know, she's got an honest job now or something, you know. Don't, don't, don't again, sex work is work, but it's, she, she was very exposed. It was, it was dangerous for her to be doing what she was doing. So it's, it's good to see her in a better, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would want to know what next happens with, with Trish. Um, let's see. It would be a little funny if she was in Thunderbolts, but was still being given, like, a really, you know, annoying job to have to do, like, how she played the dumb blonde for you know, so that Jessica could access the police files in this. No, I, I would want her to have a more, you know, to be doing something, yeah. Something more meaningful. I think that is everything I have to say. Yeah, so um, let me know what, which season of Jessica Jones do you think is the best, and 
what was uh, yeah what was your favorite character of the three seasons and what do you hope for the future of jessica jones so with that out of the way i will catch you next time